Okay. Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Real Talk for Real Teens, hosted by Kim Creighton, or as she's known by the people who know her best, Mama C. The show where we uniquely combine the information teens need with the entertainment teens want. Welcome to this week's show of Real Talk for Real Teens. Um, we have an exciting show today because this is something I'm very passionate about. It's about public speaking, speaking out in public. Um, it's about building confidence. So what I, who I have on here is Dwight Jones, and he is a district governor for Toastmasters, and he'll tell you all about what Toastmasters is, what district governor is, and we'll get into a conversation about public speaking why people fear it, and why you shouldn't, and the gains you can get from it. So welcome, Dwight, and if you can just tell everybody about yourself. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Kim. I'm so excited to be here and, more importantly, to talk to our teens. Uh, again, my name is Dwight Jones. I am the district governor for Toastmaster in the state of Georgia. And what that means for you, uh, there are over 6,000 members in Georgia. I am responsible for each and every one of them. I have 80 direct reports that report to me, and what we do, uh, we talk about public speaking, we talk about leadership skills, we talk about listening skills. We carry a person who actually is afraid to speak in front of a crowd, and through our program at Toastmaster, that person eventually will be able to stand in front of a crowd of two, five, ten, maybe a hundred or two hundred people to speak. I have been in Toastmaster since 1999. I have seen lives change. Uh, public speaking is the number one fear in the world, and death is number two. And so some people would rather be in the casket than give the eulogy, as you've probably heard before. So today we're going to talk about public speaking. We're going to show you it's not as bad as you think it is. It is Toastmasters is the best kept secret in the world. And also, as we go through this program, we're, you're going to understand that what you get out of Toastmasters you cannot get on any college campus on this planet. It has been the best decision I've ever made in, in, as far as a person production. So we're looking forward to the program, and I'm looking forward to sharing what Toastmasters is all about with everyone on the program. Well, thank you. Thank you. So, um, I, and I agree with everything you say on there. I have, thanks, I have by my personality have been one of those people who's never been afraid to talk to anybody, from the president to <laughs> Um, the custodian. I mean, even as a child, I would talk to anybody. So I never had those issues. Um, so what Toastmasters did for me was help me to organize my thoughts um, so right. that I could speak um, and be persuasive when I needed to be and all those other skills. But I want you to speak to exactly, give me some history about Toastmasters um, right now. Tell me what, okay. what, what is Toastmasters? Okay, Toastmasters started in 1924. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Ralph Smetley started you know, in California in the basement. And when for Toastmasters first started, it was an all-men's club. Uh, women did not join Toastmasters until approximately in the 1970s. Uh, however, uh, at this point, Toastmasters has over 280,000 members in 116 countries, and there are over 13,500 clubs worldwide the most productive, what we call districts, and there are 87 in the world. If you count the top 12, the top 10 are outside of this country. And what, wow. Well, I make that point because other countries are seeing Toastmaster as a way of life. Now, there are articles that have been written where companies are actually paying their employees to produce in Toastmasters. So when you give a certain number of speeches, you get a bonus. Toastmaster has helped me personally uh, on my job. There are a lot of jobs I did not attempt to apply for before Toastmaster because you have to lead a meeting, you have to speak in a meeting, you have to stand in front of a crowd. But since Toastmaster, there isn't anything that come across that I would not apply for now. It has built my confidence, self-esteem, and, and it absolutely, absolutely has helped me out with my leadership skills. And I want us to go t take that back to just the basics, not even being able to speak in front of an audience. Toastmasters is a great – I mean, you guys need to have interview skills. If Toastmasters is a great way for you to walk into a, a, a room with some person who you've never met who is going to make a decision on whether they're going to hire you or not and sell yourself. 
Yeah, you're exactly right, Kim. Um, Toastmaster program, and I'll give you a little bit how that works. 99% of the club will meet for an hour. There's three phases of the program. There's the speaking part, there's the better listening part, and the impromptu speaking. And when you talk about job interviews, the part of the program I'm talking about is called table topics. The person will come in with a certain number of questions. No one in the room knows what the question will be. And what that does is make you think on your feet. For example, I could come in and say, well, how would you handle the traffic in Atlanta? And I'm going to call your name. You have no clue that I'm about to do this. And it teaches you to think on your feet. I've been in Toastmasters so many years, it has really helped me when I go to a job interview. For example, they ask you a question, well, tell me about a time when, and you're thinking, like, okay, I've never been in that situation. So you've got to come up with something. Toastmasters have helped me to think on my feet, to talk to anyone, especially if you're on a job and your boss comes to you and says, hey, hey, what about that project? How's it going? And then you say, uh, 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 well, you don't say that anymore. Toastmasters will help you respond coherently. Uh, there are so many phases of Toastmasters. And to surprise everyone, the speaking part is really not the most important part of the organization. It is evaluation. Because every meeting, when you stand up and speak, someone's going to stand up behind you and give you an evaluation of your speech to tell you how well you did, to give you some pointers on how to improve. So that is another part of Toastmasters that a lot of people don't know about. Exactly. Um, and we're always, and the kids who, who I work with, they know. I will ask them something off the cuff in a minute just to see where mm-hmm. their head is. And, and people will do that. They just to, just to check where your thinking is and how can you, if I put you in this situation, um, how will you um, handle yourself? Can you, can you, even if you don't know the answer, there's a great way to say, you know, I don't know the answer and still look like you are polished and know what you're doing. You're right. Uh, we want our kids, and, and it helps It helps everyone with social skills. Cause there was a time when before Toastmasters, if I had to go to a social event, I would have to find somebody I know and stand and talk to that person all night mm, mm-hmm. because my social skill was very, very, very little. Since Toastmasters, it's helped me to be confident enough to go to any room, and as you said earlier, I can talk to the President of the United States and I can talk to the janitor. It doesn't matter. You walk in the room, you can stand in the middle of the room and talk to anyone that comes by you. So Toastmasters will also help you with your social skills. And especially for our teens in this day and age, there's so much technology that we can have kids in a room for two or three hours and nobody will talk because they're texting or they're playing some type of video game. Yes, yeah, so the, exactly. the texting so and all those things are challenges. Yeah, it's hurt our social skills. skills. Is, is right. that yeah that communication skills is um, even just to have those those challenging conversations they are do it on Facebook and Twitter and texting mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. to have the conversation because they don't know how to have challenging conversations they don't know how to tell an adult um, a teacher hey this the grade could you please explain the grade you gave me in a way that makes that adult want to listen to them and, and right and just take for example just go to a restaurant. And just stand there and watch families just sit there and nobody talks. Everyone has some type of uh, cell phone or gadget in their hand and they're playing with the gadget. There's no conversation. So we need to get back to the old days. What did we all do before cell phones and all these technology? What well, are the social skills? And, and and when we don't talk to our kids early in life, then they'll get to the point where they don't talk to us at all. And then all of a sudden, some come back to you and say, well, your child said this or did this, and you're like, well, no, not my child. But you don't know that because you never really sat down and talked with your child and had a conversation and don't get to know the person. In any relationship on the planet, in order to get to know someone, you got to talk to them. Mm-hmm. And that's it. And, that's that, and I like that other part about Toastmasters. People think, oh, you were a born leader. Leaders are made. Um, hey, look, I mean, well, I, I, I'll go one better than that. Some some people are born leaders, and then some people are made. And when mm-hmm. I say born leaders, they have this ability to just want to lead in any type of event, any type of organization, any type of activity. They just want to lead. However, there's some who have the skill inside of them, but just mm-hmm. don't know how to do it. 
Toastmaster will help you out with that also because when I joined Toastmaster, my main reason for joining was to get rid of the fear of public speaking. I had no idea that I would gain the leadership skills that I've gained in, in Toastmaster. And, again, I'm leading over 6,000 people in Georgia, and I have about 80 people that report directly to me. And then imagine you're trying to motivate people who you don't pay. You know, that, exactly, that's a challenge. It's a, fully, it's a fully volunteer organization. Right? right. It's a nonprofit organization. Yeah. So, you know, you have to keep motivating them and letting them know, okay, what you put into Toastmasters is what you're going to get out of Toastmasters. Uh, so, again, we're in 116 countries, and I tell you, when you go overseas, the value of Toastmasters to them is all going like a PhD program. And, you know, and, and they it should a, be because this is such a global community, and 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 we need to, our young people, and that's just young people, period. It, it, it's not, it didn't start with this generation. Right. What you see in front of you is your reality. But you guys are connected far more than Dwight and I ever were connected because, you know, we didn't have a cell phone. We didn't have um, – um, uh, we didn't even have call, call waiting. We didn't have answer machines. If you went no. in the house, you missed that call. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah, we didn't have Facebook, Twitter, and all these things where you can go a whole week and, and have a conversation with somebody without saying a word. Yeah, without because yeah, you're using Facebook. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. using Facebook. You're using Twitter. You're texting the whole week, and all of a sudden, when you get in front of someone, and all of a sudden you realize, okay, what do we talk about now? You know, what if you're in a situation where, let's take all the kids on a trip, and say, bring your cell phones. Now, use your cell phone for the whole week. Now, by the third or fourth day, every cell phone should be dead by then. Yeah. At this point, what are y'all going to do now? Mm-hmm. And just watch well, their can, behavior. You can bring your cha- cell phone, but you can't bring a charger. Right. You know, you can bring yeah. the cell phone, don't bring the charger, and what do you do? Cause my daughter went on a, a retreat uh, maybe about a month ago. They were not allowed to bring cell phones. Mm-hmm. You know, the church, the church invited them to go on the retreat because they wanted everyone to sit and talk to each other. Mm-hmm. You know, no cell phones, no newspaper, no radio, no television or anything talk to each other. And that's where we have to get back in, in our society because if we do that in our country and we can talk to people in other countries and just spread it all over the world, this whole world will be entirely different. You know, we, we just have to get back to the basics, just having a conversation. And for our teenagers, I wish I could put touch mouse in every school in this country. It mm-hmm. would make a huge difference. And peer pressure would almost go away. Because it will build self-esteem to a lot of people. It will build leadership skills. A lot of kids, and I hate to say this part, but you know, making good grades sometimes is considered not the thing to do. You know, I, I don't understand it. I never did. Uh, as I was growing up, you had no choice <laughs> to, but to bring on some good grades. Otherwise, the consequences are not pretty. Well, so these days, these kids. Well, I'm going to speak to the fact of when you were talking about the leadership in the schools, what I've found, or among teens, what I've found, though, and this has been since before, that the leaders are the ones, I, they, they are the ones that are most disruptive. I have c- come up to several young people and said, you know what, I see that you're, because I'm loud, so I understand that. I see that you're loud, you're disrespectful, you're, you're this, you're that. But what I also see, is that they follow you? You're a leader, yeah. and then what I what I show them is when you're when you miss a day of school, the class runs smoothly. As soon as mm-hmm. you come back, that class mm-hmm. is so disrupted. But I turn mm-hmm. it because that is a positive. Yeah. You have the ability to lead people, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. they don't know how to channel that into a way that's positive. Well, you know, you you make a great point there because I ran an after school program in a, in a place called Opelika, Alabama. And oh, had kids who like. were, <laughs> <laughs> they had kids who were disruptive. And what I did with those kids was, okay, if you want to be a class clown, I said, come to the front of the room. I said, everyone, put your pencils down, put your paper down, sit down, be quiet. And I sat in the chair. I said, you want attention? You stand in front of the room. Now go ahead and do what you want to do. And he sat there, I mean, stood there for a while. Didn't say a word. 
I said, well, I thought you wanted the attention, you wanted to be the class clown, so go ahead, put on your show. Mm-hmm. But once I gave him the attention, he didn't take it. On the floor, he didn't know, right. because he didn't know how to channel that. He didn't know how to channel that. I mean, he had the talent to be funny. Okay, mm-hmm. I understand that, but don't disrupt the class. You know, you have other kids who want to learn, but don't stop their learning by you being so disruptive. And when I gave him the floor, I never had a problem out of him again. Because he exactly. knew, and, and, and there's a way to deal with our kids. And, and we, we have kids that are so smart and they're bright. I can take any kid on this planet, put them in this program, and you're talking about six to seven, eight weeks. They'll be able to speak. But and I've done say, it before. Gonna, yeah, and I'm going to say, and it's not, it's not. It may be a challenge in the beginning. Trust right. me, because you got to get it over your be. own fears. It has nothing right. to do with what they, the program. It's right. getting over your own fears. But once you walk through your own fears, mm-hmm. you can do this. So let me take a quick break. And what I want you, when we come back, I want you to t- talk us through um, if these young people decided to come to the Toastmasters, what would a cl- what are the requirements? Because I know there are certain speeches. So let's mm-hmm. just really just break that down. So let's take a quick break, and then I'll be right back. Okay. Real Talk for Real Teens is having a national co-host intern search, and duties include interviewing guests, screening calls, and queuing breaks. Now, the ideal candidate is age 16 to 20, energetic, outgoing, organized, takes initiative, and is truly interested in doing the job well. But you must have reliable access to the Internet and a telephone. So please send a video two minutes or less demonstrating why you would be perfect for this position. Creativity counts. Send your submissions to Real Talk for Real Teens at gmail.com. Welcome back to Real Talk for Real Teens, hosted by Kim Creighton. To talk live on the air, call 347 539 5226. Welcome back to our um, public speaking show. It's not as hard as you think, and our guest speaker is Dwight Jones. So, Dwight, when I left you, I wanted, before the break, I wanted you to come back and just walk us through what Toastmasters, um, before you do that, I want you to tell us why, because I've heard those statistics, too, about people fear public speaking more is number one and then death is number two. Could you talk about why you think that is? Because I know, and, and, and what the effect of that has on your life, and then we'll get into the program. Okay, okay. Uh, the why I think public speaking is the number one fear in the world. Is, uh, it is something that we're just not used to doing. Uh, when we stand in front of a crowd, it, the speaking part is not the actual fear. It's just what do I look like? What do I sound like? What are they going to think about me? You're just not used to it. You can sit in a meeting in your company and three or four people and talk all day. But for some reason, when you stand in front of a crowd, the brain freezes up. Uh, I've seen it happen where the most eloquent person in a meeting get on stage and just crumble. Uh, so what Toastmasters is all about is and you have to be 18 years or older to join the actual Toastmasters organization. Uh, we have meetings, uh, some meet every week, some meet biweekly. There are company clubs and there are community clubs. Most community clubs are open to anyone. Most company clubs, you have to be an employee of that company to be part of the program. The dues are $36 every six months. Uh, when you first joined Toastmasters, you would pay an extra twenty dollars to get all your manuals, and you pay thirty six dollars every six months to continue your dues. Uh, the meeting starts off with what we call our club mission. We have speakers, and we have evaluations, and we have table topics. And we also have a person who sits there and will count every time somebody says ah, um, and you know. We have somebody who called the grammarian. That person will listen at your speech and basically give you what we call the English 101 report. You know, what did you say? Did you conjugate your verbs and your nouns? And at the end of the meeting, all the reports are given. And when you do that over and over and over again, you will see a person who may start out saying 30 or 40 odds and arms after maybe a few months, that person will go down to maybe six or seven. Then all of a sudden, he or she will go to zero. 
And for our youth, if you're under 18, we do have a youth leadership program, which lasts about nine weeks and is very effective in that program. It's basically a Toastmaster club on a smaller scale. The time limits are reduced, and our speakers will do the same thing in the program, but just in a short period of time. And we also have a gather club that is ongoing. So if any community center, uh, church, have teenagers, and they want to put them in this type of program, we can actually start a program in any community center or a church and have that program go on year-round. And you can do the same thing. But, again, for our kids, I've seen uh, the program start off with kids that are able to speak maybe 30 or 40 seconds. And after six or seven weeks of doing the same thing over and over and over again, they would be given three to five-minute speeches at the end. I've done this program many times, and we did it with the 100 black men of the Cap County. At the end, we had 18 speakers. Out of 18 speakers, only two of those speakers used notes. Everyone else did not use notes when they got on stage and spoke. And what we realized was we said, well, you can speak about anything you want to. Boy, you should have heard the topics that came out. I'm they sure. They told some things that were deep down inside. They had been wanting to say for a long time, and we gave mm-hmm. them the platform to say it. Mm-hmm. And we, and I, I like the, the title of your show, Real Talk or Real Teens. And that's, not, I was just about to say that that is what this show is all about, giving them the platform to say some things that and they are not normally allowed to say. Right. And and we asked them to talk about anything you want to. We didn't mm-hmm. say, well, you know, these are your guidelines. You can't say this, mm-hmm. you can't say that. No, whatever's on your mind, because we mm-hmm. know when they speak from the heart, it is mm-hmm. real. And you mm-hmm. never know what's in a person's heart if you don't get an opportunity. Sometimes we shelter our kids and say, well, don't say this and don't say that. And they got something inside them they want to say, but we don't give them the platform. So when we do this program, I personally do not say what you can and cannot talk about. I really don't care what you say. Exactly. If you have something <laughs> on your mind, just mm-hmm. get it out, because I believe – if it doesn't come out in this program, it's going to come out sooner or later, and it may not be in the format that we want to see yet. Exactly. So it may not be we, appropriate. Exactly. It may not be appropriate. So give our kids a fat form, and you'll be surprised uh, the creativity of our children. We just got to let them go. Don't don't hinder them. Let mm-hmm. them develop their own personality. And we can't control them. Okay, don't do this. Don't do that. You know, be quiet. Sit here. No, let them do their thing. Because you know, I, I know I've... I've Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no ahead. I was saying I know that I have, because um, sometimes I bring young people on to be my guest um, host, mm-hmm. and I know that I've had young people who I know can run their mouth all day, who have great <laughs> opinions, who mm-hmm. have, a, who can, but no, I'm scared. It's like, oh my God, someone gives you an opportunity, and that's that's one reason I brought this show, on, brought you guys, brought you on. What I am and, and, am trying to, because all my whole thing is preparing young people to make that successful transition from adolescence to adulthood. Mm-hmm. No one really helped me doing it. And my parents, it's like you said, in my parents' effort to protect me from the world, they did not do a great job of getting me ready for adulthood. And so there were a lot of things that they could have taught me, and I would have done made better choices. I, or uh, my parents did a great job of exposing me, thankfully. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know a lot of young people, black, white, Asian, it doesn't matter. We're They're not exposed. Right. And I would hate when I ask, because one part of this show is is to have a mini concert for an artist, an unknown artist, to have, mm-hmm. um, if you have three professionally done songs, and that is, with the te- today's technology, you can do that on a laptop. I mean, <laughs> it's right. not like you've got mm-hmm. to go to a studio. And when right. I'm and they're saying they're like, oh, I want to be on the show, I want to be on the show, I'm an artist. So where's your music? You don't have it. I am so tired of young people not being prepared. And this is where the rubber hits the road. This is why I brought you on here. I don't want another young person to miss the opportunity because they're afraid to get up in front of, and speak in front of somebody. Yeah, and I, I think we we owe it to our kids to make sure that they are ready because uh, we we send them out there and not prepare. Uh, they go out, for example, for a job interview. You know, they, they don't know how to dress when they get to the interview. Uh, they don't know how to dress. I'm sorry, dress for the interview. When they get to the interview, they don't really know what to say. We never talk about. Okay, you're going to have an interview. Let's prepare for it. We don't teach our kids to get ready 
for something that may come. We we shouldn't wait until it's here. Oh, mm-hmm. it's here now. Let's get ready for it. Mm-hmm. No, let's mm-hmm. prepare our kids way ahead of time so they'll be ready. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we do our kids a disservice when we don't prepare them for it. We expect them to learn on their own because you know most of our parents in this day and age want to be friends with their children instead of being a parent. You know, and <laughs> I tell you. I, you know, my house, we call what we call the golden rule. Who we makes the gold makes the rules. So yeah. You, well, I'm going to, you, to, you, to speak to that, I'm going to say that a lot of the parents I've come across aren't aware either. So I, it's just like, and that's, again, why I do this. Because I found when I was working in public school systems, it was I was concerned about a child until the parent came in, and I was like, wow, I have to now, and I don't want. And if it offends people, it offends people. I now have to parent this parent because they don't mm-hmm. know. They don't know. They don't know. Well, the we sugarcoat we, we sugar too much. Go ahead. Huh? Know, for our kids, yes, yeah. we, exactly. we sugarcoat too much for them. You know. And again, your title is perfect. Real talk for real team. Uh, this is a platform where they can come in and just speak their minds. Exactly. You know, we, we try to hold them back, and when we hold them back. Our kids cannot develop. And the way they should because they develop. need that opportunity to make mistakes in a safe environment and then learn yeah, from yeah. it. It's practice. You don't want them to get out on a job and practice. You want them to have that practice before they even get there. Yeah, I mean, growing up, I've made plenty of mistakes. You, know, you go out there and because you know, we didn't have the all the Wii games and Nintendo and text and all that stuff we have now, we had to go out in the yard and create games. Yeah, we had to use yeah. our imagination to play <laughs> games, create games. We didn't have all these technology things they have now. Kids can sit in the house for a whole year and play, a, you know, I don't know, how many games and not say a word. And when mm-hmm. they get into a social environment, no one knows what to do. And then when they yeah. really try to talk to each other, it's in a different format, and people are not used to it, and they take it the wrong way. So exactly. we got to teach our kids, too. Yeah. When they get in an environment, this is how you socialize. You can be the smartest person on the planet, but if you have not been exposed, it, it does you no good. Exactly. You, know, you, you don't exactly. know how to use that. So uh, exactly. we definitely have to make sure our kids uh, are able to speak. Because when you watch television and all these athletes uh, get on television and they're being interviewed, you realize that you know no one has taken time out with these kids to teach them how to speak. Ask them or a you question. realize no, the no one ever. Yeah, no or one ever answered the question. The, yeah, or you realize. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Or you realize the ones who you can tell who have some kind of training because they go on to have careers after sports. They're the they're the um um the the what's that dude who just went on um who's now Kelly Ripper's Michael Strahan. They're your yeah. Michael Strahan. Yeah. They're your because they right. they have learned how to hold themselves, how to be professional, and it's not just speaking, guys. It's a whole and this is what I said. It's a whole demeanor, and demeanor means how you present yourself. Your attitude, it's, it's everything. It's how you enter a room. It's how you sit in a room, how you approach people, how you um, leave a con- how you start a conversation, how you leave a conversation, how you exit that room. It's a whole, it's a lot of stuff that you guys just don't know. It's the same thing when I was at prom and kids were saying, oh, Miss Creighton, you, being, you know you being mean when I'm telling you how you dance at a house party. It's not how you dance in a $500 gown. That's not how you do that. <laughs> <laughs> and and you're right. Saying, and these and kids, then, but 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 I then I had to say, you know what? I apologize on behalf of adults because we haven't taught you the difference. Right, right, right. And, and you make a great point when you talk about the athletes who, after their career, go and get these sports center jobs. People are watching you from day one. Mm-hmm. The sports center talent pool I already know. Okay, when this person retires. We're going to get him on our show. He, he, mm-hmm. He's a superstar in the game. He speaks well. And I've seen it. Um, with, it wasn't. It was a version of what we call the American Idol type sports center show, where they interview sports athletes. You get to come on the show and give a sports analogy or something. And based on your analogy, you will win a spot on the show. Mm-hmm. Only certain ones can get on that show and do that. So exactly. if you're an athlete, it's student of the game. People are watching you. And when you do your interviews, they're listening at you, how you talk, how you speak, and how you dress. Oh, yeah, because people you're going to represent the organization. And I you, mean, you, I know you – I remember you – I know you remember when – I mean, <laughs> Magic Johnson was a great player. 
When he first picked yeah. up that mic, he was not a great speaker. Right. And he's gotten, but he's practiced and he's gotten better. Right. Because he right. was a straight embarrassment. It was like, right. and, and you know he's not an idiot because he's a great entrepreneur. But how he came across, oh, he came across as unintelligent, uh, uh, right. un, uh, could not communicate his thoughts, um, and and it, it it did not look well on him. But he saw that there was a deficit, and he went out and did something about it. Well, right. and I think our teens have to understand is you can be the smartest person on the planet, but when you open your mouth. Does everybody else know that? Exactly. When you, when you open your mouth, and can you put a subject and a verb together and make sense? You know, if if you can remember a rap song the first day it comes out, the whole album, we know exactly. you're smart enough to learn English. Mm-hmm. Uh, so our kids have to understand that this English 101. If you can just learn English 101 when you do speak to someone, that they will tef- definitely look at you entirely different. So we got to get away from the fantasy world of speaking like a hip-hop artist or a rapper and thinking that is the way that you are. Just look, for example, at Jay-Z. Years ago, he used to be what we call one of the top hip-hop artists as far as thuggish styles on the planet. Uh-huh. He has changed his whole persona. He yes. dressed entirely differently. Yes. Uh-huh. His business, people he hang around is entirely different. He hangs around with one uh-huh. Buffett. Mhm. Exactly. Uh, years Bill years Gates. ago, <laughs> that wasn't Jay Z. Jay Z. He has learned. Oh, if I act like this, then I can get more. But he, and he, he also had great mentors. Look what he wearing now. Look what he wearing. He also had great mentors. Oh my God! Right. Yes. He's not wearing. He's not wearing his pants below his butt. And and, right. and I understand that that's fashion. I get you. I mean, right. we had those doggone members only jackets. We, we you know. Yeah. We. It, it's, <laughs> Things are fashion. I get you, yeah. but everything you again, does one. not trans- yeah. <laughs> everything does not translate in every situation. So we're going right. to take a quick break. And what I want us to do for fun is to do some table topics. Okay. Okay. So All on right. this break, you think of something uh, for me, and I'll think of something for you, and we're just going to fly right. and see where we go. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, All right. New or unknown musical artists, we need you for the show. If you'd like to have your own mini concert, please send three original quality produced songs, no sampling, to Real Talk for Real Teens at gmail.com. Welcome back to Real Talk for Real Teens, hosted by Kim Creighton. To talk live on the air, call 347 539 5226. Well, welcome back to Real Talk for Real Teens. This is our public speaking. It's not as hard as you think it is show. And, again, my guest is Dwight Jones, District Governor of Toastmasters in the Southeast. And what we're going to do is give you an example of what he means by table topics, where he said that you are giving um, someone, ask you a question, you don't know what the question is, and you have to speak about it. So, Mr. Jones, I'll go first. <laughs> so what is your question? Okay, Kim, if money and time was not an issue for you, what would you do? If money and time wasn't a factor at all, what would you do? And I can honestly say what I would do if money and time were not an issue for me is exactly what I'm doing right now. I left my job as a full-time public school teacher in May um, because I felt – that um, I needed to leave the teaching of curriculum and subjects to those people who are an expert at it. I never said I was an expert at math, science, English, and social studies. But what I am an expert at is building relationships with young people and helping them see and helping them transition from adolescence to adulthood. And so this show is the perfect platform for me. This is what I will be doing I would not be um, – I would spend my time getting guest speakers that are really going to impact young people and really take them to the next level and challenge them. I would um, spend my time going out and getting and, – and 
developing these artists and getting them to understand when someone gives you an opportunity, you need to have A, B, C, D ready. And because you don't have exposure, I would be doing those workshops, getting them ready for A, B, C, D, E. I would be doing exactly what I'm doing now, and I am so thankful that I am able to do it. Um, So, yeah, this is exactly what I'll be doing. I just love working with these young people. And um, another thing that I will be doing is taking this show to college campuses. I also want to take it to detention centers and help those young people as they transition um, from adolescent to adulthood and foster care students. foster care kids who have to age out of the system at 18. So, yeah, I'll be doing exactly what I'm doing now. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, shoot at me. All right. <laughs> All right, Dwight, <laughs> my question for you is, you um, you have, um, I believe, two kids, right? You're married with two kids? I have three, three. Okay, you have three kids. I actually kids. have three, three kids and, and two grandkids. Oh, okay. So... This coming summer, 2003, um, uh-huh. where if if you had access to, let's say, um, Tyler Perry's jet for the summer, uh-huh. <laughs> what would you do with your family? If I had uh, access to Tyler Perry's jet, uh, I would go to Paris. That is something my wife has always wanted to do. Uh, take her to Paris and, and more or less get into the culture of different countries in that part of the uh, region. I would definitely go to Disney World. I think everyone on, the, on this planet should visit Disney World at least once in their life. Uh, I would also go to uh, Haiti. Uh, we have a sister church in Haiti that is very poor, so I would like to go over there and just kind of support those people and letting them know that even though we're in the United States, we just have not forgotten about them. Uh, those are some of the things I would like to do. And I'm not really big on fancy stuff, but if I had the jet, I would definitely take my wife to Paris, go to Disney World in Haiti, uh, go visit our sister church over there and help them out as much as I can. All right. So, young people, you see that every question that you that people come up may give you doesn't have to be some serious um, thought-provoking question. It's just your ability to answer a question, you know, to really connect with what you think about something and and, and um, expound on it. It's not, had he asked me that question, I said, um, what I'm doing right now, and that's it. It's about adding color and flavor and feeling to what you're talking about. Right, and it's it's and we I like to ask our children open ended questions, uh, not those questions where you yes. say yes or no, because mm-hmm. that's easy for them to do it. And and when we have these programs with our kids, the first speech they will give what we call icebreaker, and the icebreaker is about you. You have two to three minutes just to tell us about who you are, and you'll be surprised when I first started this, the kids were speaking maybe. 30 seconds, 15 seconds, 20 seconds. That's in the beginning. Mm-hmm. When we come to the second week of the program, we do the same thing, a little bit longer. And by the time we get to the seven or eight week, they're speaking three to five minute speeches. So it can be done. Uh, and when you talk about the tabletop as part of the making pick on their feet, give more than a yes and no answer. You know, sometimes people ask you a question, you say yes, and then they say, well, what do you mean by yes? Basically, they want you to expound on your answer. Even on your job, when they ask you a question, they want you to expound on the answer. Tabletop will also help you with job interviews. And, and it is one of the most important parts of our meetings. And you'll be surprised, even as adults, there are a lot of adults who will try to hide when that part of the meeting starts. You know, they'll yeah. drop their head <laughs> if you can't see them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they become I, invisible. I, right. I, I used to be one of those words, but now uh, it doesn't bother me at all. Uh, I, any question that you bring, because I, I realize that I'm, I'm always thinking. So when they bring the question to me, I can come up with an answer. It doesn't matter whether also, I'll come up with some type of answer. Something just hit me, and this is the bottom line. When someone's asking you about yourself, it's your opportunity to sell who you are. 
You Absolutely. never know as a young person Absolutely. who's looking at you for what. I've Absolutely. gotten so many opportunities that had nothing to do with jobs. I wasn't there for a job. I wasn't mm-hmm. there for any. I was, but people, because I was able to speak and I had clear thoughts, right. people were like, wow. I know somebody, or oh, I didn't. I have this opportunity. Are you interested? And then mm-hmm. they didn't even come to that event looking to hire or pass my information on to somebody else. But because I could come in a room and make myself a part of that room, not disappear into the wall, but people. And it's not about arrogance. It's about right. being confident in who right. you are and what you have to say. Because when you're right. saying. Um, um, the icebreaker, and that's talking for 15 to 30 seconds. There is no way you guys got so much swag and you think you're the best. You're going to tell me that you, you, you swag and listen, you know you all this, but all you can say is 15 minutes about yourself, 15 seconds about yourself? It, it goes back you to that. You say more fear. than that when you're whispering in the girl's ear. Right. It or goes back to that fear. Yeah, it goes yeah. back to that fear of public speaking. When, they, when mm-hmm. you ask them to stand in front of a crowd and say those things, all of a sudden, Okay, let me organize my thoughts. It, it just becomes foreign to them. You know, we can talk the slang, we can say those things with ease, but to put a complete sentence together and organize speech, that's where the challenges come in for most of our kids because just, they're just not used to doing it. So and, I, I guarantee and, um, you. Go ahead. If we can put this into our environment, in our communities, in our schools, just, just make sure that our kids... I would say master this part of their life. Mm-hmm. You, you'll see a world of difference in our kids throughout this yeah. country. Yes, because you don't know when you're on. You don't know who's watching you. You no. don't know when you we when your skills match somebody else's. But you have to be able to communicate that. And right. also the reason I, one thing I talk about because um, I also have a nonprofit and I talk about what mm-hmm. my group is. Mm-hmm. The standards are so low. Oh, when you talk about when you talk about you know you had to bring home grades, I didn't. I'm gonna be honest. My mom wasn't that deaf on grades because my mom knew what kind of student I was. If I really liked the class, I was fully engaged. Um, I think I was one of those. I you know undiagnosed ADHD, undiagnosed gifted kids. And when I was bored, and you didn't engage me, I just didn't. Uh-huh. You know, I did just enough to pass the class. But what I can tell you is, she didn't lower her standards. She understood that. And so we talked about it. But she also exposed me to different things. And it's like I tell these young people, the effort, and it's not just in schools, it's on the job. People are giving, what, 40% effort on a daily basis. I mean, I look at some of the stuff, the work that people turn in, and I'm like, I can't believe you turned this in and you're getting paid for this. So if you do 10%, and I would like you to do more than that, but if you just gave 10% more effort than everybody else, you stand out above the crowd. Toastmasters is that way to get that head up, that leg up, to, so that you're above the crowd. Because everybody, you are com, com, um, competing with a global community. How are you going to stand your? How are you going to stand out? It's like brand, like Nike and Coca Cola and McDonald's have a brand. Mm-hmm. What is your brand, and how are you going to stand out? That's a great point. That's a great point. And you talk about production on the job. Uh, we, sometimes we we want to, our kids want to walk in and be the manager on the second day to get there. Yeah, they, they don't want to work for it, and we have to understand they're watching you on the job. Is you know, the way you dress, your attitude, the language that you use. You know, it, it, it doesn't start when you it doesn't start when you leave the house. I'm sorry, it starts when you leave the house. When you walk out that door, people are watching every move you make. You know, and we have the stereotype of most of who we are. We have to get rid of that also. You know, our kids you know, will have to get into an environment where they can be productive. And the expectation is, oh, not that they can't do it. What can they not do? And as parents, we have to get more involved in making sure that happens. You know, we can't just send them out there and say, okay, go do it, and never know what our kids are up to. So uh, mm-hmm. when we talk about Toastmasters and these kids, uh, it, it is the best kept secret in the world. And if, if people can really just hone into what Toastmasters can do for them, we can change lives across this planet. And, and I, I agree I will with preach you. that going to my grade. I will preach exactly. that to the grade. And I agree with you because 
a lot of the issues that we face with young people, be it um, sexual inappropriate sexual behavior, be mm-hmm. it um, the delinquency, be it the the criminal behavior, a lot of that stems from low self-esteem, low confidence, no self-worth, mm-hmm. all of those mm-hmm. things. So anything we can provide for them that builds that, arrests that behavior. They realize your your average, you know, little thug on the street who who has a good heart but is trying to show, you know, his his friends, what he can do, or just feel, you know what, everybody else is around me doing it. Mm-hmm. Given that little push, mm-hmm. will give given that ten percent more will ch- can be life altering, life altering. Uh, you're right. When you talk about self esteem, uh, uh, Touchmaster will definitely build self esteem, build confidence. Because I've seen some of my Touchmasters members come the first day and shaking like a leaf. Mm-hmm. I mean, just scared to death. And and after a few months, you see the confidence rise, and all of a sudden, you can't sit them down now. Yeah. You just can't mm-hmm. sit them down because the, the confidence is so high and and the self-esteem is so high. And then once you get in touch, Master, you will hear some speeches that will just rock your world. Some will make you laugh. Some will make you cry. and Some will make you just shake your head like, wow, how did that person get out of that situation? Again, well, yeah, it's a platform where you can come in and just say what you want, and you'll be surprised the things that people are dealing with. I'm going to take a break, and what I want you to talk about when we come back is some of the competitions, because I know you have certain competitions for certain categories, and that, right, you right. know, might be interesting, um, get a young person interested in, do, in doing this, just okay. the competition. Okay. So when we come back, okay. we'll talk about that. Okay. If you're a young person aged 16 to 20 who's doing something great in your community and you'd like to be featured on the show, please send that information to realtalkforrealteens at gmail.com. Welcome back to Real Talk for Real Teens, hosted by Kim Creighton. To talk live on the air, call 347-539-5226. Welcome back to Real Talk for Real Teens, the last part of our conversation with Dwight um, Jones the district manager of Toastmasters. So why don't you tell us some of the competition, some of the fun that you guys have at Toastmasters? Okay. Uh, in our organization, we have um, four contests a year. Uh, we have the International Speech Contest, the Humorous Speaking Contest, Table Topics Contest, and Evaluation Contest. Uh, with Table Topics, what we just gave an example of, um, you will come to an event, and there may be five, six, or more people in the contest. There will be one question asked. Uh, the first person will stay inside the room to hear the question, and everybody else will have to leave the room because everybody gets the same question. You don't want to hear the question, uh, or you don't want everybody in the room to hear the question at the same time because they have more time to think about it. You have one to two minutes to respond to that question. Now imagine trying to do this in front of three or 400 people. And you stand on stage, you can get one to two minutes to deliver your response. So you bring them in one at a time, ask the question, and they respond. And at the end, the judges vote on who is the best table topic speaker. Evaluation is another contest that we have. And what that does is we give a target speaker. Pick someone who just come out and give a speech. And everyone else will come in and evaluate that person. You get to give the person some pointers on how to improve, some things that they didn't do so well on, and basically just give them some advice on how to be a better speaker. Again, that person will, everyone will hear the speech in the beginning, and everyone will leave the room except one person. That person will give the evaluation, and they bring them in one at a time. Again, at the end, the judges will uh, see who is the best speaker. And the last two are the most popular one that we have. The human speech contest is when someone gives a five- to seven-minute human speech. And it's not a series of jokes. It is actually a human speech. Now, I've seen a lot of comedy shows, but some of these contests are some of the funniest things I've ever heard in my life. And, and just come in there and just laugh your heart out. Uh, that is done at our district level also. But the one speech that goes throughout the world is the International Speech Contest. Uh, you start out there, 30,000 participants start off worldwide. 
and when it comes to the international speech contest, it ends up with nine contestants to see who is the best in the world. And whoever wins that contest, 99.9% of the time will go on to be a professional speaker. And for those of you who don't know, professional speakers make, oh, man, you can't count the dollars that they make on just giving one speech. Yeah, some, some people... Some people can make tough. You know, you can start at free speeches to a hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars or more for a speech. Right. Now just think about Les Brown, John Maxwell. I mean, these guys making thirty, forty thousand dollars a speech. Mhm. Yeah. Uh, each session. Of, so when yeah. when we talk about international speech contests and Toastmasters, it is it is some of the best speeches you ever hear on the planet. And when they crown the Nash, the world champion, that person immediately become worldwide. Well, I want you to take a moment, and because I just thought about this, it is a profession. I want you to talk about because mm-hmm. the kids might not even know that that is a profession. That is something they can do. Talk about the person because you um, speak professionally. What is what does that profession take? Because everybody thinks doctor, lawyer, you know, police teacher. Right. What is what does it take to be a professional um, speaker? Well, you have to have a topic that you're passionate about. Um, Find something that you like, that you're passionate about, that you can just wake up tomorrow and go talk about it. If you do that and you and you perfect that topic, you can take that worldwide and basically you will have to start off speaking for free so people can get to know who you are. And then you craft your skills and you can take that all over the country. Uh, I tell people, you do, you do not have to be a Les Brown. You don't have to be a John Maxwell. Be yourself. You have mm-hmm. to develop your own brand, as you said earlier. Develop your own brand. Uh, these kids have so much to talk about. Uh, I guarantee you we can go get a group of kids and probably take half of them, and they all can come up with something they really like to talk about mm-hmm. and go out to be a professional speaker. Uh, you just have to find something you're passionate about, and when you do that, uh, if you're having fun with it, the money's going to come. The money's going to come. Yeah. So, uh, if I encourage these kids, just find something that you're passionate about, and if you want to talk about it, and you'll be surprised. Uh, people you'll be that surprised who listen. To topics. Exactly, you'll be surprised who want to hear it. Right. Because um, there, are, I mean, you have people exactly. speaking on topics of um, um, if they have health challenges, those people, and they've overcome their, mm-hmm. prof- they can go out and become professional speakers. You have athletes who um, who become. Pre- professional speakers after their careers are over. You have um, people who left their corporate America who have a expertise in an area of taxes, whatever it is, and they're professional speakers. You have people who um, their job is to start to be at meetings and entertain people while, the, while, there's, while people are eating um, their meals. Professional speaking is right. a... Um, is a business. I mean, it is a profession. And then there are all those ancillary um, professions that support it, like people who um, help with writing books, who help craft speeches, who help people get prepared to, t- to give a speech. All so it's a whole business. Well, I mean, you, 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 yeah, you can be a motivational speaker. Yeah. Hello. It, it's a huge business. There's so yeah. much money in that, but I, I, I don't you want the do kids well, to think that's do. all it is, but. Yeah, and you can you do, can be a motivational um, speaker, inspiration speaker, uh, for just find something that you would like to do. You can do seminars. Do. You can do um, um, training. Yeah, just find something you would like to do as mm-hmm. a speaker, yeah. right? Yeah, it's a, it's and it's and it's again, it's giving you that opportunity to stand out above well, the crowd. You, I'm glad you said seminars, and I also want to encourage people to. Uh, Right. I want to encourage people to, when you when you go out to be a speaker, speaker, just pretend you are teaching a session. And every time you go out, what message that you want to leave with that crowd? Try to deliver a message. You know, don't go out and try to give this perfect speech. Yeah, we don't want you to go out and try to give a perfect speech. What message would you like to leave the audience with? If you know in your heart that, okay, when I'm done, this is what I want them to know, mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. that will help you out tremendously. Mm-hmm. You know, trying to craft that perfect speech, no one really knows what a perfect speech is. But if you are a messenger of your topic and what you're passionate about, oh, it will come out. 
Well, speaking from the heart is some of the best speaking you will ever hear. So let's bring that back into the classrooms or in your job. So let's say you have to give a presentation at school. Instead of being so stressed. Any call-ins yet? um, No. (laughs) Um, Instead of being so stressed about, um, you know, getting it right, if you're passionate, if you can find a way, even if it's an assignment from a teacher, if you can find a way to find something to become passionate or excited about in that, you can have a great presentation. And it's not you standing up there reading cards. Well, we're going to take break it up. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, go Um, go ahead. um, So we have in our last few minutes, is there anything you want to leave the young people with before we get off the air today? Yeah, I I want to encourage all our young kids to just think about your brand. If if you if you leave the earth tomorrow, will people remember you in a positive way? If you leave the earth tomorrow, what would you like for people to know about you? Uh, when you go out to to be in a crowd, do people know you for something positive, or they know you as a class clown or someone who just always making jokes? You know, what do you want to do in life? And, and and I guarantee you, it doesn't matter what it is, you have to have some type of communication skills. You know, if you develop a product, you have to talk to somebody to present it to them to develop it or to sell it. If you want to be, uh, 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 actually want to go out and get any type of job, you have to talk to someone in order to get the job. It doesn't matter what you do in life. You have to talk to someone. So, Enhance our communication skills. Toastmasters will definitely help you out tremendously. We have youth leadership programs for everyone that's under 18. If you're over 18, you can go to www.toastmasters.org, click on Find a Club, just put in your zip code. You can find a club near you. We have a 300 club in Georgia, and I guarantee you Toastmasters is the best kept secret in the world. It can help anyone at any level with the communication skills, leadership skills, listening skills, and it builds self-esteem and builds confidence. So all the teens out there, just find out what you want to do in life. But more importantly, enhance your communication skills, and it will make those goals a whole lot easier to reach. Well, thank you for joining us. This is great. Um, and um, I hope everyone takes heed and understands, again, about that brand. And, again, this is your opportunity uh, as you transition from adolescence to adulthood. Your parents are going to be less and less responsible for your life. They're not going to be able to go out there and get that job for you. They're not going to be able to talk to that person um, who's interviewing you um, ahead of time and and say, oh, my kid's the greatest. You have to sell yourself. So what tools can you put in your toolbox? I think Toastmasters is a great tool to put in your toolbox to be able to sell yourself and to sell your abilities and what you bring to the table. And also to let you, again, stand out from the crowd. Because if everybody's giving 40%, if you give 50%, you're already ahead of everybody else. Exactly, 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 exactly. And for our kids, I mean, you, you can start at, right at your school. You know, when you're in class and the teacher asks a question, you know, don't be afraid to raise your hand and give an answer. You know, don't yep. be the one where I, I really don't want to answer because I don't want to speak in front of this group. Stand up and speak, and you'll be surprised how that will affect you and your grades and build your self-esteem. And you'll be surprised now that you're not afraid to stand in front of a crowd. You may you know, go out for you know, student government president, uh, some type of leadership position, but don't be afraid to speak up in the class, and you'll be surprised how it will help you out tremendously. Well, it is also, and I'll say this in, in, as the last thing, no one can – can advocate for you better than you can advocate for yourself. No right, one can right. speak on your behalf better than you can speak on than you can speak for yourself. And if you're not right. willing to speak for yourself, who else is going to do it? Right. So right. for that, I want to say yeah. for that I want to say resume. thank you. Exactly. I want to say thank you and I look forward to talking with you soon. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Well, um, great bye. great show, Kim. I'm glad you had me on. I look forward to uh, more more exciting things from you. So uh, let's keep in touch. All right. Thank you. Goodbye. Okay. You're welcome.
Bye bye. Okay, check it out. Real Talk for Real Teens theme music competition. New intro, outro, and break music is needed for the show. It'll debut on our first show in 2013, but the deadline for all submissions is November 30th, 2012. Send all submissions to realtalkforrealteens at gmail.com. Good luck. Thank you for listening, and please join us each and every Thursday from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern for more Real Talk for Real Teens.